Praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome again to 10 Minute Midday Manor. 10 minutes in the Word of God to bless your lunch hour or whenever you're able to view. Thank God for you being with us on today. We pray God's blessings today. We want to look at the subject. What did God mean by salt of the earth? That'll be coming right up. Hey man, thank you for being with us on today. My name is Pastor Christopher Harrison of Triumph Church, Roanoke. Hey man, our contact information is at the bottom of your screen. Our social media connections are there as well. We'd love to have you join us Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. Hey man, at 420 South Polish Street in Vinton, Virginia. We're live in the sanctuary and we have room for you. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for you on today. Amen. In Matthew 5, verse 13 is where we're going to start. And it talks about uh, you. He talking to his disciples. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Amen. We can preach great messages, and I've heard great messages talking about salt, and this isn't a condemnation of those messages or anything, but uh, just another way to understand what Christ meant when he was talking about the salt, salt of the earth. We talk about salt. We talk about um, a lot of different things. We can talk about, more times than not, we think about table salt and how salt um, brings uh, a measure of flavor or seasoning to uh, what we eat. Um, sweet and salty is, is the combination uh, that people look for when they're making certain foods. That combination kicks our taste buds into overdrive. Uh, salt has traditionally been used over the years in um, in preservation, we use it. Uh, I remember going to uh, my uncle's uh, home place down in Stoneville, North Carolina, and uh, they had hogs. And uh, a lot of times, in and you would use salt to um, to dry out the ham, to dry out the meat, to uh, preserve it um, by drawing out the moisture and things. You got smelling salts. Uh, you got uh, salt that you can put on uh, the ground and this time of year or maybe the last few months some people may have thrown salt onto the concrete and onto the streets in order to uh, melt the ice and uh, melt the snow so that they would have an easier time or maybe not even have to uh, plow or, or shovel excuse me shovel or plow, yeah, their, um, their driveways and roads. But when we look at salt of the earth, he specifically says salt of the earth. We have to understand that during this time period that uh, there was uh, an agricultural need for salt. They grew up in a area where salt could be mined, but also they grew up in the region of the Dead Sea where there was abundance of salt uh to be uh, gleaned uh, and used for purposes that help them and so uh, salt was something that they were familiar with uh pulling from the earth and using it uh, for agricultural purposes and so a lot of times when we understand scriptures we can hear it and it will have a meaning that will uh affect us and that's good um, because dead salt is no good to be used. It has no flavoring. It has nothing for us. But what was this used in its original context? In the original context, it was the salt of the earth, of the salt of the soil. It was, um, it was salt that was used in agricultural purposes. Uh, too much salt will dry things out, burn things. Um, but the right amount of salt uh, has another purpose. The first purpose is that it can be used as a fertilizer. And so the right amount of salt mixed in 
um, will help fertilize plants and make healthy things grow. We as the salt of the earth ought to be the uh, uh, the source or the uh, encourager of good, encourager of good quality, or good, encourager of good attitudes, of good substance. And so as a salt of the earth, uh, we make things grow. We make good things grow. And so the salt of the earth is uh, a growth mechanism. Uh, the people of God ought to be the reason why good things happen and why good comes in earth. Without the people of God, without uh, salt, uh, things will not uh, grow. Good will not grow. A second reason that the salt of the earth or the salt of the soil uh, can be used is as a, I would say, a, uh, a disinfectant. They would use it, um, sprinkle it over uh, piles of manure, piles of manure, and that will uh, kill a lot of the organisms that bring about uh, disease and infection. And you can imagine um, uh, what would happen around uh, places where uh, there were piles of manure. You, you can put salt on it to make it inert so that it would not harm uh, you or have a have a bad environment there, and so salt was very uh, important in that matter. So we ought to uh, cause the good and keep the bad. We ought to be the connection uh, to glory, uh, to con the connection to God for the good, and and we ought to be able to remove the bad. The thing about salt, salt is salt. It, it is what it is. It, it cannot stop being salt. Um, but what it can do uh, is get impurities in it to cause it to not be as salty as it should be. And so you have to make sure you have a pure salt. Um, you manufacture, you're mining, you're processing so that it has uh, the correct level of saltiness to it. Uh, so that it continues to do what it needs to do. Otherwise, it's not good for anything. It says if it's not salt, if it's not salt anymore, uh, you can just throw it out and trample under people's feet. Uh, I've read that uh, that was a process. People just threw the salt in the street uh, that uh, because it wasn't good for any use. And so if you're trampling under your feet, uh, it kills and keeps the trails uh, and the grass and the things from growing because of a, a high level of salt content. So you just walk on it and trample it into the ground and uh, cause that salt or whatever purity level it is uh, to render whatever weeds or whatever else there uh, and create bare ground. Uh, and, and just to bring a witness to that in Luke chapter number 14, says salt is good. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? He says, it is no use either for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Who has He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So it's no good for the soil to help things grow. And it's no good for the manure pile. Manure pile to, uh, y'all excuse my, my sinuses, but it's no good for the manure pile uh, to render its its uh, harmful organisms inert. And so we have to make sure that we are salty. And how do we remain salty? <laughs> I don't mean salty in terms of angry. It's something that has happened in our lives. But making sure we have the properties in us that we are useful uh, in the agricultural sense so that God can do what he wants to do and his presence can grow amongst his people and that whatever evil, whatever enemy wants to destroy the growth of God and his kingdom, we're also that vessel that stands in the gap to remove evil and remove those things that would uh, infect uh, our communities, infect our families, infect our churches, and all those that are around us. So let's continue to be salt. Let's continue to be salty. 
Let's continue to do the things that uh, God has for us to do and make sure we keep our hearts pure. I think it's Mark. Um, Mark says, uh, keep your hearts pure. I think it says, uh, and make sure there's peace among you when it's talking about salt. Um, but we understand that we have to be uh, pure and we have to keep our thoughts clean so that God can continue to use us for his purpose right now here in this present world. Amen. God bless you. Have a smile upon you today is my prayer. I pray God's continued blessings upon you. May God keep you. And please, if you're in the Roanoke Vinton area, amen. Come on out and see us. Let's grow the, the kingdom of God. Let's be salt and let's bless, be a blessing to the people of the Roanoke Valley and surrounding areas. Many of you have said you wanted to come and be a part. Amen. You're more than welcome. Amen. To fulfill that promise and uh, be a part of Triumph with the Cross Church. God bless you. Have a smile upon you. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.